the patient is seated while the examiner raises the patient's arm into flexion with one hand while the other stabilizes the scapula. The examiner applies force flexion toward end range in an attempt to reproduce shoulder pain. If pain is present, the test is positive. The patient is seated while the examiner stands anteriorly to the involved shoulder. The examiner first raises the patient's arm into approximately 90 degrees of shoulder flexion or abduction with one hand while the other stabilizes the scapula. The examiner applies forced humeral internal rotation in an attempt to reproduce pain. If pain is present, the test is positive. The examiner stands beside the patient. The examiner asks the patient to put his hand on top of the opposite shoulder. He then grabs the elbow and elevates the arm. The test is positive for a reproduction of pain. The patient is instructed to sit or stand. The examiner places the patient's shoulder in 90 degrees of abduction and 80 degrees of external rotation with the elbow at 90 degrees of flexion. The examiner applies manual resistance to the wrist first to test isometric external rotation. The examiner applies manual resistance to the wrist next to test isometric internal rotation. The examiner compares the results of the isometric test. If internal rotation strength is weaker than external rotation strength, the test is considered positive and the patient purportedly has internal impingement. The examiner abducts the patient's shoulder to 90 degrees, then asks the patient to slowly lower the arm to the side in the same arc of movement. A positive test is indicated if the patient is unable to return the arm to the side slowly or has severe pain when attempting to do so. The patient elevates the arms to 90 degrees with the thumbs up in the full cam position. The examiner provides downward pressure on the arms and notes the patient's strength. A positive test for rotator cuff tear is the examiner's assessment of more weakness in the involved shoulder, patient complaint of pain, or both. The patient is seated and the examiner supports the patient's shoulder at 90 degrees of abduction in the scapular plane. The elbow is flexed to 90 degrees and the patient is asked to forcefully externally rotate the shoulder against the examiner's resistance. A positive test is indicated by the inability of the patient to externally rotate in this position. The patient is seated with the affected arm behind his or her back. The patient is asked to lift the arm off the back. A positive test for subscapularis tear is indicated by the inability of the patient to lift the arm off the back. The patient can sit or stand with the elbow flexed to 90 degrees. The patient internally rotates the shoulder, causing the palm of the hand to be pressed into the stomach. A positive test is indicated by the elbow dropping behind the body into its tension. The examiner grasps the patient's elbow with one hand and the wrist with the other. The examiner places the elbow at 90 degrees of flexion and the shoulder at 20 degrees of elevation in the scapular plane. The examiner passively externally rotates the shoulder to near end range. The examiner asks the patient to maintain this position as the patient's wrist is released. A positive test for supraspinatus or infraspinatus tears indicated by a lag that occurs with the inability of the patient to maintain his or her arm near full external rotation. The patient is instructed to extend his or her elbow and fully supinate the forearm. The examiner standing in front of the patient resists shoulder flexion from 0 to 60 degrees. If the patient localizes pain to the bicipital groove, the test is positive. The elbow is flexed to 9 degrees and stabilized against the thorax with the forearm pronated. The examiner resists supination while the patient also laterally rotates the arm against resistance. If the pain localizes to the bicipital groove, and or the patient has a subluxation of the long head of the bicep tendon, the test is positive. The elbow is flexed to 90 degrees, the forearm is supinated, and the patient is making a fist. The examiner places one hand on the patient's elbow and one hand covering the patient's fist. 
The examiner asks the patient to perform an uppercut punch while resisting this motion. A positive test is indicated by pain or a painful pop over the anterior shoulder. The examiner places the patient's shoulder in 160 degrees of abduction and the elbow at 90 degrees of flexion. The examiner first applies the compression force to the humerus and then rotates the humerus repeatedly into internal and external rotation in an attempt to pinch the torn labrum. A positive test is indicated by the production of pain either with or without a click in the shoulder or by a reproduction of the patient's symptoms. The examiner places the patient's shoulder in 90 degrees of abduction and the elbow at 90 degrees of flexion with the forearm and supination. The examiner moves the patient's shoulder to end range external rotation, the apprehension position. At end range external rotation, the examiner asks the patient to flex his or her elbow while the examiner resists this motion. A positive test is indicated by either no change in apprehension or pain that is worsened with resisted elbow flexion. The examiner places the patient's shoulder in 120 degrees of abduction, the elbow in 90 degrees of flexion, and the forearm in supination. The examiner moves the patient's shoulder to in-range external rotation or the apprehension position. At in-range external rotation, the examiner asks the patient to flex his or her elbow while the examiner resists this movement. A positive test is indicated as a reproduction of pain during resisted elbow flexion. The patient is in the sitting or standing position. The arm is abducted to 90 degrees with the elbow extended and the forearm pronated. The patient is then asked to horizontally adduct the arm. The movement is repeated with the forearm in supination. If the patient feels pain in the bicipital group in the first case during pronation, but the pain lessens or is absent in the second case during supination, the test is considered positive for a slap lesion. The patient is instructed to stand with his or her involved shoulder at 9 degrees of flexion, 10 degrees of horizontal adduction, and maximal internal rotation with the elbow in full extension. The examiner applies a downward force to the wrist of the involved extremity. The patient resists the downward force and reports any pain. The patient's shoulder is then moved into a position of maximum external rotation, and the downward force is repeated. A positive test is indicated by pain or painful clicking in the shoulder internal rotation, and less or no pain in the external rotation. The examiner grasps the elbow and pulls down, causing an inferior traction force. The examiner notes in centimeters the distance between the inferior surface of the acromion and the superior portion of the humeral head. The examiner can repeat the test in supine with the shoulder in 20 degrees of abduction and in forward flexion while maintaining a neutral rotation. The patient assumes a supine position. The examiner grasps the proximal humerus with one hand, providing a compression force and loading the humerus into the glenoid fossa. The examiner's other hand stabilizes the scapula. The examiner applies a posterior to anterior force, noting the amount of translation is either one, to the anterior rim of the glenoid, or two, beyond the rim of the glenoid. The examiner then applies an anterior to posterior force, noting the amount of translation is either one, to the posterior rim of the glenoid, or two, beyond the rim of the glenoid. The patient assumes a supine position. The examiner pre-positions the shoulder at 90 degrees of abduction, then grasps the patient's form and maximally externally rotates the humerus. A posterior to anterior force is then applied to the posterior aspect of the humeral head by the examiner. If the patient displays apprehension or reports pain, a posterior force is then applied to the proximal humerus. A positive test for anterior instability is indicated by a decrease in the pain or apprehension, whereas no change in pain or symptoms indicates impingement. The examiner grasps the forearm with one hand and provides a posterior force on the humerus with the other. The posterior force on the proximal humerus is maintained while the examiner moves the patient's shoulder into the apprehension position. The posterior force on the humerus is then released. A positive test is indicated if the patient reports sudden pain, an increase in pain, or by reproduction of the patient's symptoms. Ah.
The examiner grasps the elbow with one hand and the scapula with the other and elevates the patient's arm to 90 degrees abduction and internal rotation. The examiner provides an axial compression-based load to the humerus through the elbow, maintaining the horizontally abducted arm. The axial compression is maintained as the patient's arm is moved into horizontal adduction. A positive test is indicated by sharp shoulder pain with or without a click or clunk.